For many years, Argentina has been silently falling. With so much chaos around the world, it's easy to get distracted by the US-China trade issues, the stock market fluctuations, or trying to keep up with the Kardashians. Argentina should have been on everyone's radar because it's a country that has been suffering for a while. It happens quietly at first, and then without regard swallows everyone whole. Today we see the intentional failure of the IMF policies and the central bank created schemes that exist specifically to steal from the people through every means imaginable. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at Argentina. This is a continuation of the video I had done yesterday. We are looking at a currency right now that has been devalued significantly. It is approaching 60 to the US dollars. Six zero. I was covering this issue years ago, showing you the steps that have led up to this point. It is not good for those in Argentina. So without further ado, let's get into the video. If you look at what has occurred over the past few years, we see a maximum devaluation of the currency. We have watched all of their intervention that has taken place by their own forces as well as the IMF. This is a cycle that seems to be repeating over and over again. I'm going to give you the download on Argentina right now. We're going to look at the current status. I'm going to show you history. We've got a lot to cover. Less than two years after Argentina made a splash in the markets by selling a $2.75 billion 100-year bond, another debt restructuring is a real possibility after the president was routed in a primary election. Apparently, investors are likely to recoup less than 40 cents on the dollar on its notes if Argentina reneges on its debt for the third time in two decades. So here they are putting out this 100-year bond. A whole bunch of people gave them money for all forms of debt. And now we see that these investors would lose more than half, more than half of their money. Now, why in the world would you give a country that has consistently defaulted money? Why would you give money to Greece. Why would you give money to any of these governments out there, especially when you are getting a negative yield? I can't believe it. We are nearing $17 trillion worth of negative yielding bonds in a world in which countries default and do not pay their investors back. I have been covering this over and over and over again. I have been showing you the documentation leading up into this point, And I know that if you are a subscriber on this channel, you have seen incrementally all of the advanced stages of the Argentina crisis and the way that this has unfolded in this unfortunate scenario. Now, if you remember, the IMF gave Argentina a $56 billion bailout, and I covered that here extensively on the channel and said that this isn't going to end well, and you're going to see that the IMF is going to take control of what Argentina can and cannot do. The IMF's record loan to Argentina was supposed to turn the page on a troubled history. It's looking more like a case of deja vu. Less than two decades ago, Argentina crashed out of an IMF program, defaulted on debt, and plunged into depression. As fund officials arrived in Buenos Aires over the weekend to assess the country's current $56 billion bailout and decide whether to keep doling out cash, some of the same warning signals are flashing. This is why this is extremely important. Check this out. Late in 2001, after a series of missed budget targets and re-upped IMF loans, the government announced it was preparing to restructure debt. Argentines rushed to the banks to pull their money out and found their deposits had been frozen by authorities, an event known as the Coralito. Now, remember what is happening here. You have high inflation. You have a currency that is devalued. You have the IMF and their bank out and you have a contraction of the economy. All of these led to a point in which people could not get their money out of the banks. This is why I keep telling people about the severity of the situation, not that occurred a hundred years ago or 2000 years ago. I'm talking about events that have taken place in modern history in countries all around the world. I don't know why people get so up in arms about these type of events as if they are fair fairy tales when they keep happening over and over again. 
They give you more details in here in the next paragraph. I just wanted to move on to show you what happened historically. Argentina sells $300 million in reserves to support the peso breaking IMF guideline. So of course, when the IMF comes in, they say what well, you can and cannot do. In this case here though, Argentina broke the rules. So we're gonna see what the IMF does as a result. Okay, I found this hilarious, so I wanted to bring it to you. Argentina seeks to extend debt maturities after market rout. Argentina's government plans to extend the maturity of its debt to stabilize markets after bonds fell to a record low. The government is aiming to clear the outlook for the financial program in the short, medium, and long term. This is due to the short-term liquidity stress and not due to problems with the solvency of the debt. That's right, nothing is wrong here. We just have to fix this little thing and we're all good. Imagine this scenario. Somebody said to you, I need to borrow $20 and you say, okay, as long as you pay me back tomorrow. Then tomorrow comes and they return to you and say, I can pay you back. There's no problem with that. I just can't pay you today. I'm going to pay you next week. And that day never comes. That's what we're seeing here. It's as if they're willing to pay you back. They just can't do so. That's all. They can do so at a future date, not on the terms that you actually agreed upon. Now, nobody freak out. Nobody start pulling all your money out and selling everything you have. Don't worry about all of that. Simply keep your money where it is and we'll be able to pay everyone off eventually, probably, but maybe not. That's the insanity of this financial system. Of course, just like the banks, everybody has their money in there. And yet if just a small percentage of people start to pull their money out, it would create a cascading effect that would force the banks to shut their doors. Couple little things before I finish the video. Dalio says the central banks are losing the ability to reverse downturns. I do agree with this. However, this is way overdue, okay? He should have came out with this information a long time ago, and now he's starting to really open up. At least we're hearing it from somebody like this eventually, although we've been talking about it here for a while. Interest rates get so low that lowering them enough to stimulate growth doesn't work well. There's a lot to be learned by understanding the mechanics of what happened then. And he's referring to the time frame between 1935 to 1945. Just think about it like this. What had happened in 2009 and beyond? Well, governments around the world, pretty much all of them, started to engage in these different stimulus programs, okay? We had everything, all types of different public works projects we saw. Stimulus as in quantitative easing, reducing interest rates, cash for clunkers, every type of bailout imaginable. All of that was taking place. Then the years went on and we still saw stimulus programs in place that didn't change so we had 10 years of this now where we are today is that they are going to begin the next round nothing has changed from those events 10 years ago we are still trying to do so even though it has no real effect it isn't improving the economy look at what's going on basically all around the world stagnation and contraction those are the two things that are apparent everywhere not prosperity no we're seeing things getting worse and i'm happy to say that at least dalio is pointing to some points here and highlighting some of the dangers Really quickly, Bangladeshi banks are facing another jump in already crippling levels of bad debt as a move by the central bank to ease the situation backfires. In an effort to revive credit growth, Bangladesh Bank introduced an amnesty program that allowed delinquent borrowers to clean up their books by making a small upfront payment and then clearing the rest of their debt over 10 years at favorable interest rates. But it also triggered a rush by healthy companies to reschedule debt on the same terms which now threatens to overwhelm the banks there are so many non-performing loans and the problem is going to get worse i understand that we can't compare a country like bangladesh to united states or japan or canada it doesn't matter i understand that but it just gives you some insight as to events that occur how they were led up to those moments and we could have something that actually takes place on a wider scale what we are seeing today are small events erupting into massive catastrophes that can't be denied i'm gonna end the video there if you found it informative hit that like button thank you very much
If you want to know how to actually bring in income for yourself, then you have to join what will soon be the biggest Amazon course on the internet. It is free. The AmazonGPS.com. I have a step-by-step -step process to teach you how to sell, how to make money, how to make a business out of Amazon. There's a link in the description. Check it out. If you want the financial education you were not taught in school, these two books have everything you need. All the details about the foundation history, the asset classes, how to make money. There's so much more in here. Click on the link in the description to take you over there where you can flip through the pages of the books for yourself. If you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. If you haven't seen the first part of this video yet, I talk about the central banks, I talk about the importance of what's happening in the financial system right now. Click on this and I will see you there.